This is the quick estimation method looking at critical lane analysis. We're going to look at a, a real intersection and look at the traffic volumes associated with this intersection and perform the calculations for this quick estimation. So we're looking at the intersection of Hillsborough Street and Blue Ridge Road. And this is just a, an image of the overall peak hour data. We're going to focus on the peak 15 minutes of this peak hour. So this is, happens at 7.45 a.m. And we see the breakdowns right through and left movements for each approach to this four-leg intersection. So starting with this data, we're going to multiply that 15-minute volume by 4 to get the hourly equivalent of that peak 15-minute volume. So for Blue Ridge Road from the north, we're going to have right of 136 through of 352 and left of 188 vehicles. And we can carry out the same multiplication for Hillsborough Street from the east, Blue Ridge from the south, and Hillsborough from the west. Next, we're going to divide by adjustment factors for the right and left turning movements. For the right is 0.85 and for the left is 0.95, and these are operational adjustments to adjust for those turning movements and the impact they have on the operations and on the, the vehicles that can move through the intersection. So I have the adjustment factors listed for each right and left turning movement respectively, and then performing those adjustments, we're dividing by those values, and so that means the volumes actually increase for the right and the left. It's really basically an assumption that those vehicles have a larger impact uh, than just a one-to-one -one ratio. Next, we're gonna to need to divide by the number of lanes for the per, per lane volumes, which is necessary for the quick estimation method. Here's our actual lane configurations. There are some shared right and through lanes on the, on Blue Ridge Road from the south and on Hillsborough Street from the west. The rest have exclusive lanes. So after we do this, we're going to get our per lane volume. So you can see in some cases we are just dividing by two. In some cases it's only one lane. So those remain the same. And in cases where they are shared, we need to sum those movements and then divide by two, which does assume an an equal distribution of the traffic across those two lanes, which we know in practice uh, won't always be the case, but it's necessary for an assumption like this kind of quick estimation method. So here's our intersection again, and we need to know a little bit about the signal timing, and for this I'm going to assume it's just a, an eight phase signal. Um, of course the actual Design may vary, but for this we'll assume this. And what I'm going to do is walk through each of these possible movements and we will see what volumes we will end up with for our critical movements. So looking at the southern leg of this intersection, this is on Blue Ridge Road. We have 72 for that left turn and the opposing left turn is 99. Of course, 99 is larger than 72, so that's the per lane, per hour volume that we're going to use as the critical lane in those two out of those two movements. Next, we're going to look at the throughs and rights on both of those approaches. And the largest of those three numbers is 280 vehicles per lane per hour, so that's the, the value that's going to go for that phase. Next, we're going to look at the east-west movements. The left turns are 160 and 67. The 160 is larger, and so we'll use that as the critical movement. And then the throughs and right turning, 231 versus 336 or 381. The largest there is 381, so that's the value we'll use for the critical movement. That gives us a total flow of 920 vehicles per hour per lane. Those are the, the sum of our critical flow. 
to get our volume to capacity ratio, we'll take that flow rate and divide it by the capacity. The highway capacity manual quick estimation method suggests 1,530 vehicles per hour per lane. We'll use that value. Of course, this varies. It can be 13, 14, 15, 1,600, possibly, possibly outside that range, depending on uh, the intersection. But we'll use this standard assumption for this analysis. That gives us a volume to capacity ratio of 0.6. Um, according to the traffic signal timing manual, uh, 0.6 is under the um, lowest setting of the volume to capacity ratio, so we, we don't expect excessive delays. One thing, though, you may notice in this intersection, there are some railroad tracks that go through that, that southern leg, and those do interrupt the operations of this intersection, so it, it may not in those times and under those conditions operate in this manner, but from just the traffic volume perspective using the quick estimation method, it does look like this, off, this intersection operates uh, sufficiently and underneath capacity.